Hey there, designer friends. What's up and welcome to another episode of What's Popping in Design, where we cover everything that happened last week in the world of design and web design. Let's get started with Dribbble, which kind of redesigned their interface and how opening a shot looks like. So what they've changed is basically they made this shot bigger, so now you actually have to scroll to see it. And the other thing is that they've hidden the comments and they've made here some suggestions so you can actually see um, posts from other people. Now, this can be great for some people, but it might be bad for other people. And the way that I got introduced to this is by seeing Dan Petty's comment on Twitter where he basically said, look, this is really bad for people who are looking for, for work because, you know, with Dribble suggests you different people and it kind of takes away the aspect of community from Dribble because it hides the comments. Basically, it looks like Dribble is changing because their business model now is to help people recruit designer. It's kind of oriented for people who are looking to hire designer versus the designers themselves and the actual community of designers within Dribble. Now, I, to be super honest, I am actually not a Dribble user. I don't have an account there. I just sometimes go there to either hire other designers that I need for specific with specific skills, or I just go there for inspiration. So for me, this is not critical, but I do want understand Dan's point about if you're using Dribbble to get work that might hurt you. Um, but when I always talk about how you market yourself as a freelancer, I always say that you know, you don't want to always depend on other platforms. You want to have use these platforms to kind of generate traffic to your own website where you can do the selling. So you always want to have your own property where you can best tell your story. All right, the next thing is, I saw this on Smashing Magazine this week, um, some really cool kind of experiment. Um, these people took uh, 10 famous logos and they basically ask people to draw them out from memory. And it's really interesting to see how people remember the logos. So here's the Apple logo, here's the Adidas logo, and you know, here's the Burger King. And you can see how accurate they were in terms of color and the terms of the shape and the, and, uh, and some people, you know, drew older logos because the logo has been changing over the years. I think this is really interesting because it shows you what's really important when you design your logo. How do you make it memorable? And there's basically three components here that you can see from people, how they remember things. There's definitely the color aspect of it. So the color of your logo is super important. There's the shape element. What is the actual object of the shape? And that is actually connected to, is that an object? Because if that's an object, it's easy to say, oh, this was an apple or, or this was a domino brick or something like that. So combining the actual shape and it's easy to remember the shape if it's not just an abstract shape, if it's a shape of something. So they, you have like a word or something that's connected to it. So you combine the unique shape with a color, that's how you make a logo memorable. And I think this is a really interesting experiment. We'll put the link if you wanna explore this in depth below this video. Another tool that I've been seeing over the last few weeks, I've actually seen this in multiple places, is this cool AR app that basically allows you to copy uh, objects using your phone from your, you know, from your environment and paste this into your, you know, your, um, your computer actually. And this is pretty, pretty cool. I'm act I'm probably not going to use this for real projects at this point. I don't trust that it will be like high resolution and really nice. I'm not going to use this for product shot. But what I think is really interesting in terms of design, it really shows you where AR is going and what you how you will be able as a designer to use these tools to combine your physical environment and your digital environment. I think that's really cool to understand where the world of AR is going to. Next thing is Photoshop has introduced their new version. It's funny that Photoshop has to put their new version on Product Hunt to get people to even notice. Um, and there's one really cool thing that I wanna show you in the new Photoshop. Before I dive into it, I do think that Photoshop is so underrated because everybody's talking about Figma and Sketch and XD and all of these kind of software, which are basically at the end of the day, making rectangulars and putting images and creating kind of mockups. But if you want to create really, if you, if you, most website and most designs actually include visuals. And if you want to work on the visual and refine it, 
you have to know how to use Photoshop, which is a complex software. It took me years to really master everything that you can do. But I think it's so underrated because nobody's bothered to, bothering to learn these days the intricacies of Photoshop. So I wanna show you what's really cool in this new, new version. They do have something that's called, let me see, where is this? Neural filters. And basically what that those filters do is basically they're taking your image and running AI algorithm in the cloud for them and they can do pretty crazy things with them. So let me show you, for example, these are smart portraits. So what can you do? You can actually go ahead and change my expression. So let, let's make me more happy, right? Let's turn this on and I'm gonna scroll this up a little bit. And as you can see, it's loading and it says here, this filter processes images data in the cloud. Let's see. Bam, you can see me smiling. Oh my God, it did some really bad teeth on me, <laughs> but that's still pretty crazy. Let's turn this off and let's change. You can change facial age. Let's change the age. I can actually change the direction of my head, all these kind of things. So let's make myself a little bit older and see how that looks like. Oh, so now I look a little bit older. I guess, I don't know. So this actually looks like taking all these <laughs> filters from Instagram and, and all of these apps and putting them right inside Photoshop. But uh, what I am excited about is this super zoom. So you might remember from the last episode where we actually, uh, like last week, I think we had a video about this tool that helps you increase resolution for your images. That is super, super helpful. And now actually Photoshop has built that into their software. So that's pretty cool. So all of these new neural filters, there's sky replacement, all of these kind of AI based filters is looking really, really cool in the new version of Photoshop. Do check that out. All right, so the last tool that we saw this week and I thought can be really interesting for freelancer is this tool Val, which basically is kind of like Zoom, but I'm not gonna, yeah, but, but it actually transcribes everything that's going on on the call so that later you can actually search and see what was said in the call. Why do I think this is so important? Because we as designers, we we have strategy call, onboarding call, discovery calls, and all of these sessions with our clients. And I always take notes and imagine that I could just search and have everything documented, including the name of who said that and who said what, just ready-made for me that I can search. Imagine being able to show your clients, oh, if, because the call is recorded, you said this on minute 35, you said that's okay. I think this can be really, really great for documentation and taking notes for freelancers. At the moment, I see that they're putting here request data with work email. So I guess this is more oriented right now for kind of like startups and big tech teams. I really hope they'll create a plan for freelancers because I do think this can be super, super amazing. All right, let me know in the comment if you have seen anything that's super cool in design this week or you want us to cover on next week's show. I'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.